My name is Mazen Faraj. I'm from the Hesh refugee camp next to Bethlehem. I'm a Palestinian, I'm an Arab, I'm a Muslim. But before anything else, I'm a human being. Tonight, we will share with you, Neve and myself, our personal stories about bereavement, about violence, about war, about conflict. But the most important things, what's happened with us after all what's happened to us. I born and grew up in the Hesher refugee camp. The minute that I opened my eyes as a human being, as a child, I start to ask all my, the questions that I have to face every day in my life. Daily life, family, school, water, electric, every single thing in my life, it was a complicated story. We've been more than 70 to 75 students in the same classroom as a Palestinian student. We've been most of the time without water in the summer and we've been most of the time without electric in the winter. All this, and more than that, it was for one reason, and the reason behind, it's our Nakba, our catastrophe as a Palestinian. Since that time, when my father was six years old, he expelled from his original village, running from the war and the violence and the death, and they find themselves in the Hesher refugee camp by the helping from the UNRWA, the United Nations. And they just told them it will be for the short time. And this short time, it was 70 years in this year for our Nakba as a Palestinian. And we're still waiting for justice, rights, freedom, and the most important things, to practice our humanity as a human being. We never used to be choosing any things in our life, and we never been decided any things in our life. Every day in the morning, we wake up, we don't know, how it will be the time and the distance between our school and homes, and how it will be the, the distance and the time between our job and our homes. It's not because we choose that, and not because we decide that, just because of the checkpoints and the Israeli army and the Israeli occupation. And the most important things, there is no state, and there is no freedom, and there is no free movement for the human being. This is how I grow up as a human being, and this is how I grow up and continue my life until now. I grow up with all this heavy history and heavy narrative. I don't know what to do with it. I joined the first Intifada when I was 13 years old. And then I get released. I get arrested by the Israeli army, by the Israeli occupation. For the first time in my life, to be in the Israeli prison as a kid, 15 years old. Try to imagine that. What does that mean? To be in a darkness? To be in a different place? in a different journey, and different pain, and different suffering. Try to imagine what it means to be a kid when a very hard investigation from the Israelis. Try to imagine most, it, most than that, a kid, he just far away from his family, and he far away from his future, or to build a better future for him. Far away from my school, and far away from my life. I spent more than three years and a half in Israel jail. I lost my education, I lost my school, and trust me, until now, sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm just shouting from this a very, very bad experience in Israel jail. I continue my life, and until now I live. But before that, it was 14 years old, 14 years in the past, 14 years, we received a phone call in 2002 that our father, or the body of my father, in the hospital and we didn't know what to do with that. And we just went to the Israeli army to ask them to go to the hospital and to see my father or the body of my father for the last time. And they just said, it's not allowed. You have to wait until the morning. I cannot imagine there is anyone can wait all this long night and long hours, but this is actually what we mean by incubation. You cannot choose and you cannot decide, and all the time they try to build inside yourself the culture of not allowed, forbidden. Everything, it's not allowed for you. Not allowed to be free, not allowed to be human, and the most important things, not allowed to exist as a, a person or as an identity, as a Palestinian. And we had all this long night, and my father was coming back from Jerusalem to Bethlehem, coming back from his work, and the Israeli army, they start to shoot in him, and they kill him without any reason. Or maybe there is a, a million reasons behind 
which is the incubation and the conflict and the violence and the war, because this is what we call to live in the middle of the conflict all your life and all the time. After three days of what's happened to my father, according to our traditional Muslims, we have to wake up in the morning and to continue the normal life. But trust me, there's nothing normal anymore since that time until now. We don't know what to do, especially me. My father was he's a father and a mother too. I don't, know to, I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know what to do with my anger. And I don't know how I will continue my life. More than two years, it's taken me to, in this inside myself, a big conflict, a big question. What I can do as a human being? All of us, when it's having to ask something, immediately we'll think about revenge, we'll think about reaction, to express yourself. But I never think about revenge. Because our case, as a Palestinian, it's about justice, it's about rights, it's about freedom. It's not about revenge, and it's not about violence. And there's another people, they just die slowly with their memories, without to do nothing. Or maybe some people, they will choose another way, or in a different way. When I met for the first time in my life, Ramil Hanan, an Israeli, he lost his daughter, Smadar, in 1997, and I discovered the humanity of my enemy. And I discovered the humanity of the other side, which is I never saw it in my life before. All my life as a Palestinian, I know the Israelis very well as a settlers, as a soldiers, as a people that treat us so hard in Israel jail. I never met them as a human being. But in 2005, the first time in my life, I met the Israelis as a human being, or maybe the new picture in myself, or for me, or for, from the, society, the Israeli society. The first time in my life, it was an Israeli who respect me as a human being, or respect me as a Palestinian. The first time in my life, there is an Israeli who recognize there is, it will be a freedom for this man or for his rights and, and all the Palestinian society. The first time in my life I see an Israeli, he's against the incubation, which is what I was looking all my life about the partner, about the partnership with the Israelis. Today, after 10 years, I just can tell you the new way and the new journey of reconciliation with the other side doesn't mean about forgetness and forgiveness. I will never forget what's happened to me. And I, I don't have a right to forgive what's happened to my father. But in the middle, there is a way of dialogue, understand, knowing, knowing each other, understand each other, and the most important things, respect each other. And this is actually what is missing in our conflict, in our land, respect and the humanity. And we can find the human side in this conflict, which is no one care about all the politicians and all the people around the world, they don't care about it. And today, together in the Baron Circle, the Brief Families Forum, yes, we are. We are the people that pay the highest price in this conflict. And we can sit and we can talk and we can stand with each other. And this is our mission and our holy mission. And it will be forever. And thank you very much. Wow. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Niv Sarig. I'm 40 years old. I'm an Israeli. I live in Israel with my wife and three sons. And I also want to tell you about my life, the story of my life and how my life got changed twice. The first time was when my elder, elder brother, Guy, he was an infantry officer, um, got shot, got killed in a Palestinian city called Tul Karim, only 15 kilometers from our home in Israel. And yes, losing Guy changed my life completely, as is expected. Changed my parents' life, my sister's life, um, grief, sadness. I, I, I personally miss for what could have been done if Guy wouldn't have been killed. I have three sons. My sister have, has, has a three kids as well, and for sure, guy would have two, two and a half, maybe three kids by now, and we would be a much larger family. But yes, I, I miss what could have been done if guy wouldn't be killed. <laughs> what was unexpected was how my life got changed so profoundly for the second time, 
when I joined the Parent Circle Family Forum, uh, much, 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 uh, lo lots of years later, after guy got, guy got killed. But I don't think you can understand, or I, for me, it was very uh, important, it is important for me to, to deliver the perspective of why this type of transformation is so, so doesn't happen anymore, or doesn't happen so, so rarely. So you need, you need to understand that in Israel, there is a, a great segregation between the Jewish Hebrew-speaking society and the Arab society, which is grasped almost natural. There is very few um, connections between people, very few joint in, uh, educational institutes, for example, and it is very common to look on the other side in a very flat color, frightening and despair. And between Israelis and Palestinians in Palestine, not inside Israel, it's even more extreme. I think there are very few Israelis and Palestinians that met each other that not across aims, either military aims or aims, political aims, towards peace and or reconciliation. So by not knowing the other side at all, you make yourself some picture of, of the other side that probably helps you to live your life as they are. I grew, uh, I born on the winter of 1977 in a village in Israel called Chibat Zion, which is translated not less to Fond of Zion. And yes, <laughs> I was grew up uh, for 90 years, 19 years till guy got killed, as any other uh, Jewish, Israeli, Zionist kid uh, I know. And on the Evening of the Feast of the Bernicles, just like now, by the way, in, in Islam and in, in Judaism, now we have the, the new year. It got connected this year, by the way. And uh, in 1996, September, uh, after uh, two weeks of New Year, we have the Feast of the Bernicles. And just a couple of days before that, uh, riots began out of the opening of what known now as the Western Wall Tunnel riots in Israel and Palestine, where 17 Israelis and more than 100 Palestinians found their death. And Guy, he was an officer in what called the joint patrols between Israelis and Palestinians. You need to understand that after 94, 93, 94, when the new agreement of Oslo took place, uh, we, th there was a beginning of collaboration, and these joint patrols was one of them. So Guy was an officer in Tulkarem, and uh, after the riot started, he was shot by a sniper in his head um, and dead and got killed on, stop, uh, on spot. Uh, as I said before, it changed my life completely. And many years later, many years later, I managed to do the same step that my parents did much, much before me and joined the Parent Circle Family Forum. And after knowing Mazen, for example, or other Palestinian members, in, or any member in the forum, I found a new perspective on life. A new perspective that is out of this fear that we live in. I am in Germany, so with the Jewish society, we have lots of perspective, past, present, future. In the past, yes, we have these 2,000 years of persecutions, so many places around the world. In the near, near past and present, there is my personal story, though not that personal, because I don't know any Israeli that is not close to someone that lost someone close to him in the conflict. And to have a, a, a hopeful future, what we do in the PCFF, the Parent Secret Family Forum, we go to schools and other organizations. We meet pupils or students or general audience, and we tell our story. And this magic happens every and each time. Something opens in people's hearts and minds and bring them to listening and even to action and in Israel and in Palestine, I believe and I, 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 I feel that, that it does bring hope to the situation. The Israeli society and this segregation brings to a lot of ignorance and a lot of fear. And this fear comes from our need for security. And uh, I want to have Mazen with me again here because I think that our message is very unique and very important. Uh, so Mazen, please. I think, and I'm sure, and I believe that we share the same pain, 
maybe for a different reason. He lost his brother, I lost my father. And actually we, both of us, from the people, they paid the highest price in this conflict. And more than 600 families in the Baron Circle, we calling everyone around the world, and especially the Palestinians and the Israelis, look to our experience and learn from it. Try to imagine what it means to lose someone in this conflict. Try to imagine the way and the decision that we, both of us, we take in this path, path of peace, hope, and reconciliation. And it will, it will be, there is no security for the Israelis without my freedom. And it will be, there is no freedom for the Palestinians without the Israeli security. And it's in our hands to show the humanity of the other side, to get in touch, to connect, to look one to the other in the eyes and to understand that the pain is universal and the loss is, is human and to look beyond the fear and to look for freedom for one and for security for the other, but together. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next part. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yala. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much.